Good afternoon. My name is Dylan Jones. I'm the team leader for Team One, and we will be presenting on the quadruple net value of Agri Park. So, in this presentation, the first thing you're going to see is our video. And after that, we're going to take a look at our proposed improvements of Agri Park that is going to create enduring value by meeting the current and future needs of this campus. Following that, Jordan Taylor will speak on the social and cultural value of Agri Park. Then, Caleb Yeager will speak on the sensory aspects of the park. Then Christy Kiner will speak on the economic value, and T.A. Kunjit will speak on the environmental aspects of the park. And finally, I'll make a brief conclusion of the presentation. So let's get started. Mystery. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, I'd say obstructive, uh, empty, void, uh, almost unnecessary space that could probably be used for something else. <laughs> what is? Never heard of it. <laughs> Can you give me one word describing Aggie Park? <laughs> well, well, I mean, like it's not very cool. impressive right now. Plain? Is that a good word? That's a good word, right? It's yeah. Pretty plain. plain. Yeah. So okay. boring. Boring. Spence Park for me is a place of very hard memories. Looking back on it, I put my face in the dirt a lot there. Uh, cried a few times. And uh, I don't like to think about it. I don't like to go there. Or do I like to... I think it's cool that people tailgate there. They have fun memories, but that's not my version of Spence Park. So. Tailgate. What do you think about Aggie Park? I'm sorry, I don't know what Aggie Park is. I'm gonna say... Empty? I'm not really sure, maybe like tailgating or... Can you give me one word to describe Aggie Park? Um... I'd say dirty. <laughs> Thank you.
From that video you guys were able to gather and truly understand what our vision was for this um, new park. Um, so I will go straight into social and cultural. Um, so as far as safety and security, currently the park isn't really inviting um, in those terms. There's not really any, I mean the lighting is really consistent, there's no surveillance system and there's only one emergency call booth. So we propose the idea of um, consistent lighting to make the park more accessible and have a more sense of security after hours, as well as um, a surveillance system connected to the, the um, AM campus, and then also a few more emergency booths, sorry, excuse me, um, emergency call booths, just in case any extreme event were to ever happen, um, that they would be more accessible. Um, public access, I think that we all know that this site is located in the most centralized part and activated part of campus, surrounded by Kyle Field, the Association, um, the MSC, the core dorms, and um, all of that good stuff. So that really makes this site a perfect opportunity for an extravagant development um, here at Texas A&M. Um, it's easily accessible with the fact that coldest parking garage is on site as well as the walkability just being located on campus and the bus routes dropping people off at Kyle Field the MSC which uh, probably would give people about a four or five minute walk um, to, the, to the park. We have proposed uh, new bike parking though however because the park currently neglects that as the closest bike parking is the MSC and Colts. Um, health currently uh, as we know it, <laughs> there's time-worn equipment, uh, workout equipment that's really only utilized by the, the core. Um, and then also pathways or rough surfaces, uneven paths, and sharp angles, uh, making connectivity and flow throughout the park kind of chaotic. So our intentions are to um, incorporate a workout park that can be utilized by all students. Um, and then looping pathways surrounding the lake uh, with mile markers on it um, that invite walkers and runners. 
And then also multi-purpose lawns, two of them that when not being used for televating, they can be used for kinese classes, um, or like body weight exercises and various sports like throwing the football with your friends, picnicking, flying your kite, or playing frisbee. Uh, as far as educational history goes, the park right now neglects to highlight and tell the true story of, of Texas A&M. And there's not really any conditions that people want to study in. Um, so we've recommended designated study areas like a study plaza that incorporates shade, seating, and electricity uh, to plug in your laptop when you when need be. Uh, and then also study mounts and study steps for that more relaxation study where you can just read your book, read your textbook. Um, and then also signage for educational use for, um, to really educate the public on potentially the plants that are on site, the end of history, and then maybe even the site construction itself. And then Fish Creek Monument. We've taken this idea from, I think, Team 4 of the landscape design crew. Uh, it's not only an interactive structure, but it also has engravings that truly tell, tell the story of AM and the traditions that we embody here. Uh, public events. After doing a little bit of math, kind of figured out that this site is truly only activated less than 2% of the year, with eight days of tailgating and then three ring days. That being said, we've introduced a series of structures that enable year-round activation, such as a pavilion uh, that can be rented out and used for parties, um, what, whatever you may have, an amphitheater for student organizational performances as well as music performances on tailgate days to truly enhance that whole tailgate experience here. Um, and, then, next. and I've already touched on the study mounds and plazas, and then also it's kind of condescending, condescending that our um, that our mascot is a dog, and we don't really have any dog-friendly locations here on campus. So Rev's Dog Park, maybe it could be her home, um, but also everybody loves a little puppy therapy. Um, the food truck plaza, a, a place to eat year-round on campus, but not only a place that you just go to get food, a place that you can go and sit and pick out the food that you want. Um, and then also a playground. I think that a lot of us have neglected the fact that there are students that are parents, and there's no location on campus for these people that have chaotic schedules. I mean, could you even fathom having a child going through what you're going through? I'm sure some of you do, but um, <laughs> it's just insane to, to think that. So, yeah. <laughs> so we propose the idea of a central playground um, that can be visibly seen from all from a lot of the parts of the park, so that both the kid and the child can come here and enjoy the park while the parent may study or work out and they can keep an eye on the child at all times. And then also a park calendar um, that could more likely be used uh, by the Student Activity Center, um, like breakfast in the park, yoga in the park, and then maybe seasonal paddle boats come in for rental and then organizational performances at the amphitheater. Uh, public art, we know that the Aggie Ring statue is uh, on site that is going to stay put where it is because it makes sense where it is. Uh, and then the two other sculptures that are on site will probably just be relocated uh, elsewhere within, within the park. Uh, we've also incorporated this idea of a hydro art sculpture, which is not only a, a water feature, but is also a piece of art in itself. And then an interactive graffiti wall, and I put graffiti in quotations because it's not necessarily you come in. Uh, with the, your can of spray paint and spray paint the wall, but maybe more something where you can write what Texas a and means to you, or um, write Aggies or the you know the core values of our our school here, um, which would also create really good photo opportunities for visitors and students. And then, last but not least, for social and cultural, the pedestrian comfort. At this moment in time, there's uneven pathways, um, age furnishing, muddy and patchy um, conditions in the landscaping. Uh, so we're going to offer fluid pathways with consistent hardscaping um, and level terrain because it's as little as three quarters of an inch in level change that can create um, a tripping hazard. Um, so it'll be completely ADA compliant and then also we'll incorporate modern furniture, um, preserve the oak shading that's uh, present right now as well as add uh, native trees and plants and then incorporate turf to endure those hard workouts by the core and the tailgating. And now I'm going to pass it on to Caleb with Sensory. Thanks Jordan. Uh, I'll get into the Sensory. Uh, as we know, uh, visually Aggie Park isn't, uh, it's not visually there. Um, you've got two, 
this is not a mean dirt everywhere. Um, you've got, you know, uh, Kyle Field adjacent to Aggie Park, and then you've got uh, the foundation, the Aggie Ring. Um, two great sites, but nothing to activate the park. And so just a few things to visually rise the park is our, uh, the, the lake feature with a, uh, like Jordan said, a uh, modern art uh, fountain on it, um, as well as an amphitheater, um, because it was cool, yes. Um, and then flower gardens just to liven up the place and give it a little bit of color. And then for smell, uh, just to bring in a uh, proposed food truck plaza, it'll make students come there, um, want to hang out and grab some lunch and talk with friends. And, and then again, flower gardens. I guess flower gardens are a lot of it, but uh, it's good to walk past a nice flower garden and take in the smell. And then touch. Uh, the study mounds and hammocks, like Jordan already uh, touched on, um, students can come and relax and just really just hang out. And then the outdoor workout area where the uh, the core uh, usually uses it uh, now for a lot, but uh, maybe some students can get away from the rec and use that instead if the rec is uh, full like it always is. And then again, the flower garden. It's always nice to look at some nice flowers and just touch them. And then sound, obviously, uh, our amphitheater for live entertainment, not just for um, game days, but for year-round, that activates the park year-round. Um, anybody can come up and use it. And then obviously you've got the game day sounds from Caulfield, and then uh, the water fountain in our proposed lake. Um, it's always nice to hear some running water. Uh, it's nice and calming. And then taste, again, we've got the proposed food truck plaza. It was bring in an added uh, element to the park. Come in and try different types of food they've never tried before, maybe, and then get the tuggies as well. And then I'll pass it off to Chris. All right, thanks, Caleb. So to touch on economic value um, for irrigation adjacent properties, you have MSC, Kyle Field, Rudder Tower, and the coldest building. And um, those are all pretty important buildings on campus, and they all generate tons of revenue. So wouldn't it be nice if Aggie Park, which is right next to them, could have that same value with them? Um, now looking at the uh, tourism and visitation, currently right now, all that's going on there is Aggie Ring Day, tailgating, and then the court uses it for workouts. Um, but after our proposed uh, plan, we were hoping that people would come in and eat the food trucks, and people would be there attending events at the amphitheater. Um, for the food trucks, right now there's currently food trucks on campus, but there's only like three or four of them, I think, and I looked them up, and there's actually 37 in College Station. So maybe if we had a nice sort of designated spot for them, they would be more, they'd be more willing to come, and that way there'd be a good variety, so people would be coming back to the space more often. And then people attending events at the amphitheater, that can be anything from student run activities to school events and things like that. And then um, going on to the generated um, revenue, so with food trucks, there's really low overhead with that because all you really have to do is provide them with a place to park and then they come in with all their equipment and stuff and everything they need to run their business. And then the events at the amphitheater, that would be a great uh, source of revenue to rent that out to whoever may want to use it. Um, I know one group mentioned local schools, that would be a great idea. And you also have the staffing that comes along with that, concessions, things like that. And then we also wanted to pro propose some premium tailgating spots. So maybe you have an area that's turfed off with like electrical outlets, anything you may need. Um, for tailgating days, and then um, those could be rented off kind of like on a uh, season basis, like tickets are. And now I'm going to hand it over to Tia for the environmental analysis. Um, so, as you saw in the video and in this picture, there's not really a lot to see on Aggie Park right now. So, we propose adding in flower gardens, um, much more improved lawn, some study mounds, and well, there are native trees um, present on site, but then we're planning on adding a lot more trees to increase and improve the kind of vegetation that's on Aggie Park right now. So, um, as a form of social responsibility, in, and in order to reduce the effects of climate change, modern development these days needs um, some environmental certifications, and some of which are LEED certification, sustainable sites initiative, smart growth recognition and conservation certification. But because we're not going to have a lot of developments on site, we're only going to utilize water efficiency and sustainable sites for our project. 
So to improve the air quality of our um, project, we suggest adding in more trees to increase the tree canopy in the park. And that's um, providing more shade and improving the air quality. Currently, there are some native trees which are effective for minimizing carbon dioxide emissions, but there's still a need for more trees to further minimize the heat island impact on site. As far as the um, sustainability is concerned, we will be adapting the lead effort for sustainability by improving the vegetation, improving the aquatic life, and um, instead of just planting flower gardens anywhere, we suggested uh, we decided we're going to use rainwater gardens, as you can see in the picture. Um, so what happens with these is they will be engineered so that the soil is going to absorb all the chemicals from the stormwater, and then the clean water is going to go to the ponds. That's improving that aquatic life for the fish that we're going to have in the ponds. We also plan on conserving water through creative and low-impact landscaping. So doing so, we'll be planting drought tolerant plants such as the cherry sage, purple sunflower, and beaded iris. So 15% of our site is going to have impermeable, uh, an impermeable surface and the rest is going to be permeable um, pavements. So we we'll also have, and the advantage for using this is to manage stormwater where it falls. The, ra the rain gardens I spoke of earlier will also help in on-site management of stormwater and lastly the pond will act like a good detention pond to keep the water from fire. Um, in terms of conservation, I think a lot of Aggies, when we spoke to a lot of Aggies, I spoke about how it gets really uh, muddy during tailgate season. So we propose using synthetic turf. Um, the advantage of using synthetic turf is it doesn't need watering, so um, we're conserving water. It will obviously cause less mud during tailgate season. It doesn't need any chemicals or fertilizers, so no harmful chemicals, which makes it safe for the environment. And we don't have to hire more people to take care of the lawn because it's synthetic, so it requires less maintenance. And in between the tailgate areas, we'll have power outlets. So. I haven't been here for tailgate season, but I hear people bring generators, so with the outlets, people will be able to connect their grills or charge their phones or whatever, and because generators emit some bad um, air in the, in the air, we're trying to minimize the effect of carbon dioxide in the air, so that will, when it gets crowded, we'll have cleaner air, and yeah, and um, the pond will also be ideal for habitat conservation and the native trees that we're going to add and the ones that are already there will not require watering so and that way we'll be conserving water. Thank you. So in conclusion, currently Aggie Park is void or dirty or students don't know where it is as you saw from our interviewees and when that's the case for such a valuable asset I mean, it's right next to Kyle Field, it's right next to the MSC, so that park is not being used to its highest and best use. So with our proposed improvements, we're confident that this park will be a valuable asset to the campus. And we really want to improve the game day experience with the tailgating, the amphitheater, the power, and also we want to improve and have something to offer the other 365 days of the year. Thank you for your time, and if you have any questions. Any questions? You answered all of your questions. Man, you are a lively lot, aren't you? Okay, congratulations.